be all right. Subject of loneliness. Loneliness is a hard one. Loneliness. I think that feeling of being all alone in the world, that feeling of nobody is going to look out for me, the difficulty connecting with the people around me, this feeling of kind of isolation of something that is just difficult to work through. Of course, loneliness is very different to being alone. Those two things are separate because you you can be alone and it can actually be quite a relief sometimes. I had a coach a while back. This was really interesting. She said that solitude was not a basic human need. Whenever you seek solitude, solitude is that you are actually seeking something more like authenticity, but you maybe feel like you have to hide certain parts of yourself from the people around you. And so solitude is more a place where you can actually be yourself and express yourself and not feel like there is a judgment or a disconnection or a shaming or something like that that's going on. And so loneliness is quite different from being alone because sometimes you can be with lots of people and still feel very very lonely so typically that is there's a part of me that is wanting to connect with the people around me but for whatever reason that's not possible and particularly if you've lost somebody that's very close to you that you were used to sharing these maybe deeper more intimate and um, potentially less available to other people parts with this person then it can feel quite lonely because suddenly it's like well who's gonna connect with this part of me here maybe this person connected with this part of me in a way that I think nobody else can whether that's true or not the jury's still out on that one but this idea of having these parts of ourselves that want to connect and we feel lonely when there doesn't feel like a point of connection for those parts. So we do need other people, that's kind of obvious to say, but people around us and being authentic and having those parts of us expressed and laying them out for different people to connect with within our kind of appropriate boundaries and safety and things like that is really, really important. The loneliness phenomenon though, is often something that can be left over from childhood as well. And perhaps if you felt like you were misunderstood or you can feel it somewhere here or maybe somewhere down here, this sense of I really need to connect, but there is nobody here that can do that for me at the moment. And obviously, if we've experienced that with, say, a parent or within our, our family situation growing up, and then we project that onto a partner, like only this person can meet that need for connection. So all of this to say that the antidote to loneliness is connection and connection often starts within here. So can I sit and actually connect with the loneliness inside me, feel what I'm feeling? Maybe that's a sense of sadness, a sense of loss, a sense of maybe fear, something like that. All of these different feelings but what we're going to do today is look at loneliness and do a little bit of tapping and see if we can't start to get some of that stuff moving. So hand on the heart. See if you can notice where you actually feel the loneliness in your body. Is it somewhere here? Just as a physical sensation, where does that feel like it's landing? Somewhere around here, maybe somewhere below the solar plexus. It could be in a few different places at once. Sometimes what can come with this feeling of loneliness is a feeling of dread and a storyline that gets generated by this sense of dread that is oh this is never going to be met it's never going to be good again it's never going to be okay again and that stuff can be really really difficult if you start to jump onto that thought train and let it <laughs> carry you it can go to a, a kind of a wild place that might not be actually true so notice where you feel the loneliness in your body and if there's any other sensations that are next to it we want to listen to the thoughts and listen to the stories but as part of the broader landscape of physical reality, things that are actually happening in the body rather than just the representation of what's happening, the storyline. So you can take it with a pinch of salt, you can take that storyline and trace it back down to feel what you feel in the body. And take a breath with that. Okay, start tapping around the chest, collarbone here. All this loneliness under the arms. All this loneliness. Liver. So much loneliness. I feel so alone. I feel so cut off and disconnected. 
I feel so alone right here. All of these feelings of loneliness and any feelings of grief. Deep, deep feelings of sadness. Nobody's going to be able to connect with me. Let the yawns come if ever they want to come. Nobody's going to be able to connect with me. I'm going to feel this loneliness forever. And I'll feel so sad. I feel so sad to feel this lonely. Nobody understands what this is like. Nobody can connect with me here. And that might have been true at a time in my life. That the connection wasn't available. When I was feeling this sadness, That might have been really true. And maybe I've got grieving to do around that. And maybe I can sit with myself right here to notice what's going on in my body. Notice what's going on in my chest. Notice what's going on in my stomach. Maybe I don't have to fear this loneliness. Maybe I can settle with this feeling. And maybe I can release all of the survival stress connected to this loneliness. Maybe this deep sense of longing deep sense of connection is something that I can find in this moment. It's something that I can find with myself right here. Because maybe there's just a part of me that is longing to connect. Maybe there's just a part of me that really wants to be seen, heard, and felt. And maybe there's other parts of me that feel ashamed about this part. And maybe there are other parts of me that feel like I shouldn't reveal this to anyone. If everyone could see how lonely I am, they would run a mile. Because that's what I learned growing up. Or at least maybe that's how I interpreted it. that when I have these needs for connection, there's really nobody around to meet them. But that was then. And this is now. And I'm no longer the dependent child that I once was. That's still a part of me. But 
I'm also an adult. And I can connect with myself in different ways. And I can express myself authentically to people in different ways. Without the fear of them leaving me. In the same way it materialized when I was young. Maybe I do still fear people leaving me. Maybe that's a natural fear. Maybe there are some people I really like connecting with. And when that connection is not available, it's the most normal thing in the world. miss them. The joy that I felt in that connection with them. So powerful, so alive and so true. But now that that connection is gone, it feels really painful. Part of me is afraid of that pain. And that fear is telling me, watch out. This might never happen again. That's what it's really worried about. That I'll never be able to experience that joy of connection. ever again. And that thought feels terrifying. So I want to be present with that thought and present with that idea and not try to convince or persuade it otherwise. I don't want to try to suppress it. I don't want to try to logic it out of its stance. I don't want to try to bully it into submission. I don't want to try to correct it before I connect with it. In fact, I want to do the opposite. I want to connect with it right here, right now. As if that thought was a scared child that just needed some reassurance, that just needed some holding. That just needed some connection in order to help it come down. that place of terror down to the ground and settle into the present moment settle into the right here right now where that connection is available Maybe this means I have to sit with some uncomfortable feelings. But that's okay. I'm willing to commit to myself enough. To sit with myself in the hard times. To sit with my animal body. whilst it has its experiences and it has all its feelings and has all its reactions and 
and not check out on it. And not abandon it either. In its time of need. I'm willing to let it express itself authentically. And I'm willing to be completely here and present with it. while it does so. Giving myself access to all the love I need. Right here, right now. Including any other feelings aside from loneliness. including any other pains and shame about having these feelings in the first place. I'm willing to sit with myself in the mud and not try to change myself, but just be here and connect. And as the connection starts to flow again, and as I breathe into these feelings, and as I let them breathe themselves through, that in itself can help them start to shift. And I'm willing to keep doing that. completely imperfectly as much as I'm able I'm willing to be open even here as a commitment to myself and as an expression If I can't be in a relationship that lets me be all of who I am, I would rather be alone. That's my commitment to my authentic self. I'm not willing to settle for less. And everything that's past is past. And it's okay if there are still some reverberations. Some ripples and feelings manifesting themselves right now. My commitment is to be true to myself. Because there's nothing worse than feeling lonely around other people. So that tells me that loneliness is an inside job. that I can connect with myself right here, right now. And help dissolve that in this moment. Okay, belly and chest. Notice what you feel. Notice if that shifted anything, if there's any movements going on in the body, any openings, insights, things like that. You can repeat these videos as much as you like. It's like you're charting a thought course. You know, you go into the thought, you recognize what's there, the thoughts that are particularly emotionally charged, and you help weave them around into a place of connection, and also by connecting with the body at the same time. So, <sighs> <sighs> Lots of yawning today. Hopefully that was helpful for you. 
Um, do let me know how it goes. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.